Okay, so on to the next test case for MP1. I have the previous test case for MP1 working. I'll do my best not to show you the solution, which is right in front of you. Um, but we're going to go on. Um, please do finish these in order. That's going to work out the best. There are some dependencies in the test suites, uh, so we'd really like you to finish them in order. Okay, but we're going to go back to our tests. Uh, and we're going to work on the, the next part of, of this. And I'm going to show you a little bit about what happen, needs to happen. Okay, uh, so I'm close that. Now, the next test actually has a helper test that I suggest that you run first. And that's actually what we're going to focus on. So you'll see that this is an ungraded test. It's not going to work initially, uh, but getting it to work is actually a pretty important part of the work that we need to do on this next, uh, this next part. And I'll just walk you through this, right? Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, disable this ignore annotation because the ignore annotation tells the test suite to not run this test. And we do want to run this test. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this test all by itself. Uh, and I do not expect this test to work right now. Um, and we're going to see why not. Now, um, let's look at what the, what it's testing. Okay. So what this does is it retrieves that list of courses from the backend server, that uh, JSON string that has a list, an array of course JSON objects. And it checks to see if it has the right fields. Now, it doesn't have the right fields. It's actually missing quite a few fields. Uh, one of the fields that's missing is ID. Let's talk about why that is. So to understand why, what the problem is, we actually have to look at the server code. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to open up uh, network uh, server.java. And I'm going to look at the load restaurants method. So let's look at that together. Uh, let's see here. So I'm going to go and go to go to uh, declaration usages. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening here. This, the first thing this does is it loads this file restaurants.csv into a string. And this scanner business is just this, like somehow Java shipped without a sane way of doing this. And so this is what we ended up with. This works, like this is the thing you find on Stack Overflow when you search for how to do this. It's sad and a little bit uh, bad, but it works. And it's only, it's something you can do using only built-in Java features. It's, I don't even want to talk about it. Let's not talk about it, but it works. So it essentially takes the whole file and loads the contents into a string. Then we use this CSV processing library to read this in. We have it skip the first line because the first line has a header. And so one question is why do this? Like, why can't I just parse the CSV the way I used to? Like just split it by commas and then off I go. The reason is, turns out that CSV is a little more complicated than that. So for example, what happens if there's a comma inside one of the fields in your CSV? And there are cases in this where some of the names, I think, have a comma in them, and that breaks various things. So it's better to use a library to do something like this. You might think, oh, you taught me how to do this by just using split, right? And you could, but you'd end up with some problems, right? So this works fine. Uh, this gives us back uh, an iterator that allows us to go through and get string arrays. Each one of these string arrays um, has different parts and the parts are parsed from each line in the CSV file. So let's open up that, that CSV file again. It's always good when you're working with data, whoops, wrong place, uh, to, to look at the data that you're working with and understand it, okay? So I've got an ID, a name, cuisine, and website. And let's look at the server code. And the only thing that the server is sticking into the JSON right now is the name. And it, and it parses that from, the first, from parts one, right? So the first part of the, the, sorry, the second item in the list, but there actually are three other items. So let's put them in the JSON in the fields that the test case expects. So the test case expects to find an ID field, a name field, a cuisine field, and a URL field. And if we go back to our restaurant sets VSV, we see that's in the same order that they're in in the CSV. Uh, and so we're gonna make this change here. Uh, and I like, I'm gonna put these in order. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're adding a field to this JSON object and we're going to call this field ID. Oh, go away. Um, and we're going to use uh, parts zero. There is a way to get that to go away, by the way. Uh, all right. And then what I'll do now, because I'm a lazy programmer, is I'll just cut and paste this. The next two fields are cuisine, which is the third field in the JSON. And uh, what's the other one it wants? It wants it to be called URL. 
It's actually called a website in the CSD, but this is normal. A lot of times you have little disagreements throughout your code base about how things work. Okay, so after making this set of changes, uh, I should be able to um, load the, this, this test case should pass. Now the other thing that's happening, so, so now what's gonna happen is the JSON that the server is sending to the client is correct. Right. This is correct according to our spec. We actually have all the information from this file that is in there. We have all four fields, the ID, the name, the cuisine, and the, the website URL. So that's great. We also need to look at our restaurant's model. So I'm going to go over here and look at the restaurant's model. Now, Jackson, the serialization library that we've been learning about, will automatically populate the fields of our restaurant object if it finds a getter or a setter for that field. Actually, all it needs is a getter. So you'll see that it has a get name and a get cuisine. And so those are the two fields that will be loaded in to instances of restaurant when that array of restaurant JSON objects is deserialized. Later, we may need the website URL or the ID. We're definitely gonna need the ID. For now, we don't. The name and the cuisine are fine, but just put this in the back of your mind that later, if it turns out that you need that ID field in the client to do various things, which again, I promise you we will, you're actually going to add some, need to add some code here as well, right? So you may need to come back to this file. But for now, the only two fields that we need to complete the search function that we're going to add are the name and the cuisine. Um, and we have those already. Remember, we added the cuisine when we added the MP1 test suites because there was a test that required it, right? So we already had this here. It wasn't being populated before because the JSON didn't have a cuisine field, but now the JSON does, right? And so let me, let me show you kind of what we've accomplished here. Let me go ahead and comment out the things that we added. And now what I want to do is I want to go here and I'm going to, yeah, right down here. And I'm just going to do a system.out.println restaurants JSON. And then I'm going to rerun that test. Now that test is going to fail now because I'm not loading the correct fields. But what I want you to, want you to see is what happens. Um, so we're going to go from our restaurants JSON, which only has these names in it, right? These are valid JSON objects, but they only have a name. And now what I'm gonna do is go back and uncomment those lines that I added where I'm loading the other fields out of the JSON and adding them, sorry, out of the CSV and adding them to my JSON objects. And now what you'll see is those JSON objects go from having just one field with the name of the restaurant to having four fields with an ID, yep, yep, an ID, a cuisine, um, a, a website and uh, a name. Um, and you'll see some of these are blank, right? So sometimes the, there's no cuisine value for Applebee's. I guess Applebee's doesn't consider itself to be American food. That, that may be telling, right? I don't, I don't wanna go, I don't wanna make any more comments about Applebee's, but I feel like the fact that it's cuisine is um, empty is appropriate, shall we say. All right, so now we're ready to get started on the graded test case because we're loading the correct information from our JSON file um, and now we can write the search method.